good time to see animals, including reptiles, and I'm hoping to do a bunch of exploring tonight before I before I get too tired. Once I find my camp, get the, get everything set up, and then uh, before I get too tired, I want to do some exploring. It's going to be a full moon. Last night was the eclipse. It's going to be a full moon, and I want to see what kind of animals I can find, especially reptiles that come out at night. Um, I would like to add a couple more species to my list, uh, things that I've never seen before. Would love to add a few new species. I did already today see a coast horned lizard, Phrynosoma blandvilli, which is a new species for me, and I was so stoked to see it, I almost started crying. Look at this landscape. Whoa, 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 that doesn't look like the Galapagos. Where am I? I'm in the desert again, in the most biodiverse county in the USA. I had an interview with an author, can't tell you who, in the mountains east of San Diego. And now I'm heading over into the rain shadow created by those mountains, into a desert that got less than two inches of rain last year, where average temperatures go over 100 degrees Fahrenheit for more than half the year. It's a place rich in cool plants and animals, many of which have to hide from the sun to survive. So the first campground I passed by, that's supposed to be one of the popular ones, had no people. So I hope that's not a bad sign. I can't believe this is still San Diego County. Just two and a half hours ago, I was on the coast. There was tons of water and trees and people had lawns. Look at this. Here in the desert again, look, look at how crazy it is here. But I need to find my campground. I need to find a place to camp before it gets dark. This is Anza Borrego State Park. And you're allowed to camp or park anywhere off the road, um, just out of your car or whatever. But it seems like maybe something, for some reason, the campgrounds that I've passed so far have had no people zero people so I'm hoping to get there I don't have a four-wheel drive vehicle uh, it, the the train seems a little bit challenging but I'm hoping to find a spot where I can sleep for the night uh, and find it before it gets completely dark all right so I just pulled off the road and as you know I don't have a four-wheel drive vehicle but hopefully somewhere out here is somewhere where I can camp And I think the sand is pretty manageable for my car, hopefully. I'd say it's about in the high 80s right now. It's always great when you're out in the desert and your car starts making noises and you realize that your check engine light just came on. We don't get any flat tires out here. Somewhere out here, I gotta find a spot to camp before it gets dark, even though I don't think it's gonna get that dark tonight because it's a full moon. But look how crazy it is out here in the Anza Borrego Desert. It's so open. It's very warm right now, even though it's nice here. It's supposed to be over 100 during the day right now, which is not that bad. It gets up to like 120 here. But I think there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff to Nature Journal. There's lots of cactus, um, creosote bush, and uh, maybe some ocotillo up in the hills a little bit more, and hopefully some cool reptiles. I have enough water, I think, and hopefully I'll figure out something to do during the day so I don't die of heat exhaustion. There's no trees out here. Um, oh, I just see some, oh, I see a jackrabbit running over there. So there are mammals, and um, Fingers crossed for some reptiles. Inside of the back of the car, and I, I've done this before, I just used a slightly different mat, and I thought this would be better because it's more comfortable. I basically fit, I just have to go sort of sideways here. Um, 
and have a little bit of a bump under my back and my neck. Probably won't be the best night of sleep, but um, it's probably better in here than outside with the wind and the side wanders. I end up not having very much storage space inside the car once I'm sleeping in the back. That's why people who, who really do this in the Honda Fits, they have one of those things on the top of their car um, for storing their stuff. So I'm a little bit concerned because the wind is so intense, I can't really leave that much stuff out here. I also don't know about the animals, um, what will happen if I leave things out here because of the animals. Right now, I'm gonna show you how to nature journal in the dark, in the desert. Tip number one, don't use a light at first and see what you're able to see before you shine your light and indicate to all the animals where you are. Tip number two, okay, maybe that's a bad idea because there is cactus everywhere. And this Choya cactus, if you get this Choya cactus on you, it is not going to be a fun experience. And if you're trying to walk through the desert in the dark, uh, you might accidentally walk into this Choya cactus. Tip number three, do a really good job of remembering where your car is. Everything looks different in the dark. And so, especially if you kind of hike away while things are still a little bit light and you can still see the trail back to your car very easily pay really close attention to all the landmarks or just stay on a really simple trail so that you can find your car oh i think i found my first i think i found my first snake wait what the heck i know there have to be snakes out here somewhere there's cool tracks too, so at night you can control the angle of the light, and by controlling the angle of the light, you can make the angle the best for some tracks. Those look like those look like kangaroo rat tracks to me right there. But if I found some snake tracks, then that would give me a good idea. Like what I would love to see would be the sidewinder rattlesnake, which has one of the most unique ways of locomotion of any animal. It moves across the ground in a really fast way. It's well adapted to sandy environments such as this one here and it can move faster than most rattlesnakes because of that. Look at this. There's got to be some reptiles living inside of this somewhere. And look at how the ground looks so different as soon as you get off of this road. A lot of times there's a sort of crust that forms in the desert. Sometimes it's called a cryptobiotic crust. It allows for the soil to be sort of protected and it also allows for the germination of some of these plants. And when people hiking, but even worse, um, people driving vehicles, even bicycles make a big impact, that kind of thing can destroy this crust and that crust can take forever to reform. But around here somewhere, there's gotta be some animals. There's gotta be some animals around here somewhere. I'm afraid that these spines, <coughs> if I step on them, they go right through my sandals. So I need to be very respectful. Very, very respectful. Oh, what was that? Oh, shit. Oh, look. There's jackrabbit over there. Look at its eye reflecting. Do you see that? Why is my light getting dimmer? Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Something's not right with my light beam. Where'd the jackrabbit go? I just saw the jackrabbit. Okay. Well, that's something, jackrabbit. All right, so one thing you can nature journal at night in the desert is the friggin moonrise how awesome is that now this is a pretty full moon last night there was an eclipse but you could definitely whoa 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 whoops you could definitely nature journal out right there i don't know how you would draw it per se 
but there's definitely ways you can incorporate that into your nature journal and that is amazing it's moving pretty quickly obviously my phone camera is not doing it justice but set up my GoPro to do a night time lapse, which I haven't really done before, so we'll see how that works out. Wow, it's almost completely up now. So I said I was going to stay up as long as possible to take advantage of the desert night time, but I'm already getting tired and it's only like 9.30. I did a little bit of exploring, so I have some ideas for nature journaling to do super early in the morning. Oh, there's bugs coming into light. The moon is really crazy right now, and I've got my GoPro out there set up, but I think I'm gonna, gonna take a nap and try to wake up in the middle of the night or really early in the morning. All right, so it's too hot to sleep in the car with the windows closed, so I'm gonna roll down the windows and get naked and hopefully that won't turn out to be a bad idea. I haven't seen any mosquitoes here yet. I think it's too dry and I'm setting my alarm for 3.30 in the morning. So hopefully that'll give me some time to explore before it gets hot. Okay, so it's, it's 3.30. Uh, it's pretty bright outside. I don't know, my phone still doesn't pick it up, but my alarm went off, um, but oh no, man. I don't know if there's gonna really be that many more animals walking around right now. Um, super windy, I'm still tired, I haven't been sleeping that great here in the, inside the car. So I think I'm just gonna go back to sleep and maybe wake up at like five or something. All right, it's 4.30. This time I actually woke up and uh, that's the moon behind me. You can see the sky is lightening on the east too. I think that's Venus or something. So it's a beautiful morning here in the desert. I slept okay. I probably got, you know, four or five hours of sleep in, all things considered. Um, pretty good. And it's beautiful. I should be doing stuff right now um, before it gets hot because it just looks like it's going to be hot. I had a bunch of crazy dreams about dust storms and waking up with like trailers and campers parked all around me, but they're still um, nobody here. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's, the temperature is great right now. It's about like 67 degrees or 68 or something like that. Um, the wind finally died down, so I'm going to make some tea and um, do some exploring and nature journaling. Step number one, obviously, is to make some tea. So I got some tea here. Um, hasn't lined up that much so I still have a chance remember one thing you can do is you can start laying in the framework for a landscape ito um, in semi-darkness and as the light increases um, you can add more detail but actually sometimes this right now this amount of light is actually perfect for doing landscape ito's people usually err on the side of adding too many details into their landscape paintings so right now while the this this ridge of mountains is silhouetted and just so stark like that would be a perfect time to start drawing them another option would be i could take um a, a perspective looking behind me with like the ocotillo i can maybe try to add in the moon the moon um, or the rising sun will both be majorly difficult things to um, capture. So I probably will avoid both of those two things. Um, with acrylic, it's a little bit easier or any type of opaque, um, opaque media. Uh, but I could either look that way or look this way and start a landscape pizza while I drink my tea. I recommend not using lights if you don't have to, but if you really need a little bit of light, um, don't use a headlamp right now, especially at this time of day um, or at any moment when you have just enough light to be able to see. Try not to use a headlamp. Um, that's going to compromise you. Instead, use a small um, reading lamp that you can clip onto your journal. This way you can put the light right where you need it 
and you're not wasting light everywhere and also announcing your presence and scaring away all the animals. So this can be turned on and it can be directed just to a small area without disturbing the entire environment and ruining my night vision. All right, so I started on this watercolor and it's going great because the desert is it's so dry. Everything dries really fast. So you can do washes on your landscape beetles um, really quickly. When you're doing a landscape beetle this time of day, keep them small and keep them fast because the color changes so fast. And like I said, you could start with the basic um, framework and then sort of add more details as you go, but that can be dangerous as well. So um, just make them fast and don't get into the sort of game of like constantly changing the color as the um the colors change because uh this time of day it's gonna happen fast and you won't be able to keep up with it i'm seeing a lot more details i've heard like one large bug fly over and i think i heard some birds singing in the distance um but not really i mean that's a sign that there's very few birds here that there's no um dawn chorus going on it's spring maybe it doesn't count as spring here but um yeah pretty quiet here in the desert all right i am done with this landscape ito painting and i am glad that i um started with the black side of my pilot Fudayaku pin for the drawing instead of the gray that I usually use for my landscape drawings because it just forced me to get my values dark right away and make sure that I get the relative values because remember um, everything is relative when it comes to color and value so making sure that this is really dark compared to the sky even though the sky was pretty dark when I started I'm not even going to try to paint in Venus. Um, there's certain things about celestial bodies, I don't know if the camera is even going to pick it up, that they're just, um, they're not as bright as, um, I mean, there's, it, it's just hard to reproduce them in a photo or in a drawing to get the brightness, the luminosity. You can't put light behind the paper and make it shine through. So I'm not going to even try, but I just used words instead. Um, I also, for the parts that I didn't include in the painting, I used words saying that this, the town of Borrego Springs is this way. So now that I did that, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna explore around because this is really time to be taking advantage of in the desert. If you're not waking up before 5 a.m., you're you're wasting the time because this is gonna get hot here. So I, I have kind of a time frame that I need to work with because you know in a few hours probably it's gonna be over 100. And um, look at that. That looks like a coyote poop right there. That looks fresh. That looks like a fresh coyote or fox poop. Um, maybe even from last night. Oh yeah, that happened last night. So these coyotes were probably checking out my camp last night. You can see here's an old one. Oh my God, are those? Oh no, that's, cat. that's a piece of cactus. I thought those were cactus spines in the poop. That would be so crazy. So this looks like, this to me looks like coyote poop. They were probably here last night investigating to see if I left any food out. Um, this is a common campsite, so they probably cruise through this area. So right now I'm going to go up this road, see if I can find tracks, see if I can find your reptiles, mammals, birds. There could be roadrunners out here. Uh, anything to Nature Journal. So whenever you're in this kind of situation, um, it's good to kind of have some intentions going in about what your nature journaling intentions are or if you maybe want to get some more like physical movement in making sure that you're clear about those intentions so i didn't do a great job of 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 creating those intentions in advance the main thing i want to do is i want to do some nature journaling while I'm here, I want to see some new stuff. I want to explore a little bit and I want to film and make a good nature journaling video about nature journaling in the desert. And so I think I'm going to need to find a balance between like moving and looking for cool things and exploring and actually filling pages because if my intention is just to fill pages in the nature journal, I could find stuff. I could just nature journal 
this right here doesn't look like much, but as soon as I turn the lens of nature journaling onto something like that, it will turn amazing because, oh, I see these, these look like new. These are coyote tracks right here. Um, I can, I can nature journal anything like right next to my camp and probably find amazing, amazing stuff about it because that's what nature journaling does is it's seeing the world with new eyes instead of trying to see new things. So you have to kind of have some clarity with yourself about that and decide, you know, like, are you just going to focus on nature journaling like anything and, and actually filling pages or do you want to like walk around and explore more? Look at that. I wonder what made that hole. Um, my knee is also, I think I hiked a little bit too much yesterday. So I have to be cognizant of that. But I think part of what I want to do is explore a little bit and see if I can um, camp with my car somewhere further up the canyon. Like if I could get up into those hills a little bit more for tonight, that would be freaking awesome. Um, I know, it, you know, for me, one of the other important things is to uh, know what your tendencies are. So like, I think I often don't go very far and I just nature journal like what's right around the camp. So sometimes, I need to push myself a little bit further and I can actually find some other cool stuff. I think I heard some birds. It seems like the Ocotillo are mostly done flowering. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I thought there were going to still be a lot more flowering. They have old flowers on them, but those are the Ocotillo, those tall things. I'm blanking on the family right now. Um, they're spiny, but they're definitely not cactus. Having spines does not make you a cactus. I know some people that have spines. That does not mean they're in the Cactaceae. So the spines are not the important thing. But look at this, this is such a cool plant. Desert adapted, covered in spines. And you can see the photosynthetic part here. Um, this green part, they can photosynthesize through their branches. And here's, here's the flowers. These are old, but um, look at these flowers right here. They flower and they leaf out based on water availability. So they'll just go from this to leafed out, increasing their photosynthetic area really quickly, and then they'll ditch those leaves again later once they're not worth it anymore. But look at the spines on this, so, so cool. Um, really beautiful. This would be a fun plant to draw. I don't think I've um, hardly done any, I don't know if I've ever drawn Ocotillo, really cool plant. I don't know that much about it. Um, very cool characteristic here. And I think that there's probably more further up towards these hills. I have a feeling further up towards these hills, there will start being like a little bit more water in the ground and there could be more um, Ocotillo and more other things growing. The other a um, couple of interesting things. Oh, look, the sun. Any minute now, the sun's going to come over there. It's going to come out. The moon's going to go down. Where's the moon? What the... The moon's going to go down. The sun is going to come out, and it's going to be friggin' hot. Here you can see where someone drove off the road and maybe even got a little stuck. Oh, gosh, look at all these cigarette butts. What the hell? They smashed this plant, messed up the soil. Here's a barrel cactus. And I haven't looked up what species it is yet, but super cool. You can see the fruit on it. The flowers are past, um, but these, these are the fruits. This looks like an aborted one right here. Um, but look at that. Look at that fruit right there. How cool is that? This looks like an aborted one. You can see all the teeples. 
the sepal like petals petals and sepals and a whole bunch of fruit in there here's another awesome one these things are probably pretty ancient i think they grow really slow i've noticed this sort of damage on the bottom of some of them look at all the fruit on that one one hollowed out fruit right there it looks like a variety of things probably eat these fruit I'm getting cactus pines going through my sandals already. I hear a bird. Oh, it's responding a little bit to my imitation. So there are some birds out here. Look at this one. Oh my God. Look at, look at the spines on this. Look at how this cactus has a bunch of these sort of uh, little pups growing off of it, like new little cactuses. And um, they have these spines that are all white. They're actually kind of soft too, like the new growth spines, kind of soft. I wonder why this one has so many of these like babies coming off of it. That is crazy. That is crazy. So there's definitely a lot to look out out here. And I think I'm gonna explore just a little bit more before I choose a subject to get down in my nature journal. All right, here comes the sun. Look at how everything, the appearance of everything is changing. Like these mountains suddenly have so much more depth to them and it's about to get it's about to get really hot quickly. Look at that sun. That sun means business right there. I wonder if these plants are even photosynthesizing. Oh, look, there's another kind of cactus. That looks like a mammalaria. So look at this type of cactus. Um, a lot of them have hook spines, smaller. Uh, those are fruit on it. Um, you can see the old flowers down here, these old pink, pink flowers. A lot of these, I think it's Mammalaria genus or something closely related. Um, really beautiful cacti. A lot of these are grown as ornamentals, even in people's houses. So there's that, there's the Choya, there's the um, there's barrel cactus I showed earlier, and then there's some type of a puntia like cactus. And I can't remember, this right here might be jojoba. Um, so that's cool. Lots of cactus. Here's the other main cactus that I've noticed growing here. And I can't remember, this one is called beaver tail, but this is um, an impuntia type cactus. It's got the big pads. Um, small spines they're mostly looks like probably glockids which are really small hair like spines um still protect protect the plant because you know if you touch them you can just get all of these teeny little spines in you but different different than the choya and then you probably already know this but cactus um often has really cool skeletons so when the plants die they have this really cool framework inside all right, I just saw a pepsis, a tarantula wasp, something in the tarantula wasp genus over here. One of my all time favorite animals. I was just scanning with my binoculars and I saw movement. I thought it was a hummingbird, but then I recognized it immediately as a tarantula wasp. One of my all time favorite animals. Um, I think that might've been what I heard fly overhead. Um, earlier this morning when I was drinking my tea, I would love to get to see one of those again. I've had some good experiences with them in the past, but I'm always used to see another one. Um, I would have ran after it if it weren't for my knee, but it was just up here somewhere. I have to make sure I don't lose track of the trail. Um, that it came on because everything looks the same now out here. Okay, is this creosote bush? I think this is the creosote bush. 
one of the dominant plants in this desert region. So technically this is the Colorado desert. Um, there's several, there's like three major desert types in California. The Colorado desert is the same um, in a lot of ways as the Sonoran desert. It's the California version of the Sonoran desert, I believe. The other desert we have in California is the Mojave desert, which is higher altitude than this and gets more rain, like twice as much rain and um, even snow in some places. The Colorado desert, where I'm at right now, it's like 800 feet above sea level. And I can't remember, I think sometimes it only gets three inches of rain a year, but I think the Mojave Desert gets like twice that amount. Um, and then the other one is the, I think the other one is the Great Basin Desert, which is um, high altitude as well. I might be mixing those up, but this is definitely um, considered Colorado desert here. And there's places where there's like some crossover, of course, but, um, there are no Joshua trees here. Joshua trees, um, grow in the Mojave desert. Oh, look at that Ocotillo though. This one's got more flowers on it. I bet I could see hummingbirds out here. Like, I wonder what kind of hummingbirds there are. Um, look at this one has way more flowers on it can see the flowers on the ground too. Look at that. I can feel the heat already. The sun's barely up and I can already feel the heat. And I totally lost the tarantula wasp. Look at these flat Ocotillo flowers right there. So cool. Okay, so I walked around for a while without putting anything down on my page and decided I just need to get some of this down. I saw a jackrabbit, so I tried to draw the silhouette. It was hard, it was far away. I was looking at it through my binoculars and had to take a look through my binoculars, put the binoculars down, add to the drawing, and go back and forth like that a couple times. I'm not really good at that style of drawing through binoculars. I have a whole video where I describe mostly the other technique of drawing through binoculars, which I think I'm better at, but um, I, I wrote a lot, so, um, you know, there's things that I've been hearing, like I've heard a couple different birds now. One I think might have been a wren that I heard earlier, um, and so I wrote some of those things down. Things that I'm th seeing, things that I'm noticing, some questions that I have, some questions about dead barrel cactus. So, I think sometimes our hesitation to put things down or, or, or our tendency to kind of walk around and not nature journal can sometimes just be that we feel like there's nothing good enough to put on the page but the fact is is that even just that little silhouette of a rabbit this like teeny little diagram of a flying tarantula wasp and these words um, are going to be valuable um, especially later on and just getting something like that on the page a lot of times and reminding yourself that um, there's a really low kind of there should be a really low bar on what counts as, as nature journaling so that even just writing some stuff down like that, if you do that, instead of just walking around, it's going to enhance your learning in nature and it's going to enhance your experience, deepen your experience, uh, potentially help you notice things and find things in nature that you wouldn't have before. Spend more time out there, which leads to you noticing more things um, and just get kind of more in that flow and the more you do that, the more times you're going to get those aesthetically like impressive pages or find those really cool things in nature um, that you that you were waiting for. So even just getting some of this stuff down, I have to remind myself, um, you know, just getting this written stuff down, um, focusing on things that I'm finding interesting and just recording any of it is important. All right, so this is really, really cool here. It doesn't look like much, but this is some type of lichen, and you can see more of it there. And I don't know if this would be considered cryptobiotic crust, but there's this whole phenomenon where lichen and other things growing on the surface um, in the desert play a really important role in preventing erosion 
but also in um, retaining nutrients, nutrient cycling, and allowing for the germination of other plants. There are what look like some annual plants growing there, and these are some of the things that might um, be flowering in years when there's a lot of water, and also the the this crust created by the lichen plays a role in the germination of some of the perennials. So some of these perennial plants um, that you see here, such as the shrubs and the cacti, um, can benefit from having that crust. And when roads come through, um, or even when people are walking over and over again through the same area, that breaks up the crust. If you want to do a deep dive into it, I'm sure there's plenty of good information online you could probably find academic articles about lichen crusts in desert environments dang maybe the extra couple hundred dollars for the telephoto lens would have been worth it for the iphone whatever 13 pro max whatever the heck just so that I could get a better, better video of this tarantula hawk. Oh shoot, I lost it. Where'd it go? I know it's in here somewhere. I don't want to startle it because I don't want it to fly away. I wonder what it's doing. Oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Is it actively hunting right now? Is it looking for tarantulas? Are there tarantulas? Where are the tarantulas? Oh, look, there it is. Oh my god, you are amazing. I love you. Look at that thing. Wow. It is... Oh, oh, oh. What's going on? It's definitely checking this area out a lot. I wonder if it chemo recepts something here. It smells something in here. Look at the color. That characteristic color on the wings. can see some of those, I think they're tibial spurs on the legs. Oh my god. Look at it just cruising through all those choya spines right there. Sometimes it does that movement with its wings. Alright, so I was able to follow that tarantula hawk for like eight minutes. Um, as it cruised around on the ground, um, and I got some stuff on my nature journal page. As you can see, you know, it's a moving animal. It's hard to draw moving animals. It's not just you. You don't suck at drawing. Drawing moving animals is hard. The people who are, are good at it are an exception, and they're probably good at it because they've done it so, so much that they have a lot of what that animal looks like in their memory that they can draw. And those people could probably draw those animals um, even if they're not looking at them. So don't worry if you can't do that. Just do your best and try to if you can. What you can do is often focus in on single aspects of it. So like, for example, I have the wing in one of my drawings and I use arrows to show how it was moving across the land. And I use, use writing a lot too. I could probably write like a bunch more questions about it because I'm so curious. Um, I've already seen quite a few of those. I mean, it's kind of one of the animals that I've seen the most of. Last night I did see a lot of beetles, but um, really curious about them. Where are the tarantulas? Are there tarantulas out here? Are there other things they're going after? I did see another big spider last night that wasn't a tarantula. So do they go after other big spiders? It's getting sunny already. It's not even seven o'clock yet. And I wish I had my hat on already. Um, I do have this hood that I'm try trying to use to protect my face a little bit, but it's 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 definitely time to get get a hat on oh my god there goes another one wait that one was flying at a lower cruising height that was more like three three meters i need to add that to my notes very cool i could just nature journal um tarantula hawks all day so i basically got one nature journal page in i'm sort of running out of time it's starting to get hot and my knee is bothering me, but I feel like I need to explore a little bit more. I've seen some cool stuff, but I need to just kind of push my comfort zone a little bit more. And so what I'm going to do, oh, a bird, I see a bird, I see a bird. I saw a hummingbird and now I see, 
if I can add some new species to my list. Oh, I'm noticing sort of like a brownish color underneath. Um, it reminds me of sort of like a finch type bird or almost like a towhee just perched in the Ocotillo. And now it is lost. Shoot. I saw a hummingbird, but I want to try to see some new species to me, like maybe um, some new plants or some new reptiles. So I'm going to try to drive further up that way. Hopefully my car can handle it, but I'd like to get a little bit more into the canyon and into the rocks and at least explore that zone before it gets too hot. Once it gets too hot, I'm gonna drive into the nearest town and try to find like a library or a coffee shop or something where I can spend a couple of the hours during the middle of the day, uh, maybe use a clean bathroom and then come back out when it starts cooling off again and go to a deeper spot. So I'm gonna do a little reconnaissance right now maybe some nature journaling from my car.